Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this um, sunlit woodland scene with sun rays or sunbeams filtering through the trees and creating a beautiful sort of dappled pattern on the, the woodland floor. It's an early autumn scene. Um, the leaves are just beginning to turn. Um, and what I'm looking to achieve here is a sort of fairly simple painting that looks more complex than it is. Something that with a bit of practice, beginners and intermediates could easily approach. I'm using a quarter imperial sheet of Milford 100% cotton cold press paper. It's 140 pound or 300 grams weight. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity will help me paint. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. I'm going to start off using the wet in wet method. So I'm going to wet my page, not all over. I'm going to leave some dry patches and that will ensure that I get some soft and hard edges um, when I begin to put colour in. And this is just my paint water. Um, it's better to use clean water, but I hadn't changed it. And so using my Escoda size 14 synthetic mop brush, I'm brushing it across the page. Now brush in some yellow ochre, or you could use raw sienna or any sort of pale earthy yellow. It's a fairly watery mix, but it's quite well pigmented still, plenty of colour, because remember watercolour dries back much lighter. And I'm trying to keep the central area unpainted or at least light, because that's where I will put my sunbeams. Burnt sienna gets added in and sap green in exactly the same way. Working it in and around that lighter central area, keeping it nice and soft where the paint diffuses wet and wet with the other colours and nice hard edges where it meets dry paper. Sweeping it across the foreground, being sure to leave some strips of unpainted paper. And now I'm going to take some tissue and from those lighter areas in at the top of my tree canopies, I'm going to sweep the tissue through the wet paint. Um, I'm angling it very slightly so it looks like the light source is just out of view, sort of above the top right corner. I'm bringing down my, my sunbeams by lifting out the damp paint with the tissue. It's very important that each time you lift out, you use a fresh, clean piece of tissue. Otherwise, you can be in danger of transferring the paint back into your sunbeams. And we certainly don't want that. Now I'm flicking a bit of clean water into the canopies and onto the ground and that will give me some added texture and maybe little sunlit bokeh effects. And now I have laid my board flat and I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry completely. So it's all nice and dry so I raise my board back to 45 degrees um, and the next thing I want to do is mix up a dark mixture and start putting in some trees. Now, this is um, where I'm going to have to be quite careful because I'm going to be painting my trees over my sunbeams in some places. And so as I paint each tree, I'm only going to paint a small part at a time. And anywhere where a tree trunk or a branch goes through a sunbeam, I'm going to quickly dab out gently onto the trunk or the branch so that it looks a lot paler and much more washed out where it crosses a sunbeam. And I'm hoping this will give me that impression of light hitting the trees, but in a really simple way. This is my small calligraphy brush and I've mixed up a mixture of um, Payne's Grey burnt umber with a little bit of burnt sienna in it to warm it up. And I'm pulling my brush strokes up from the foreground um, to create my trees. And you can see now using a tissue to just dab the paint off where the branch or the trunks goes through a sunbeam area, just to lighten it back. And I'm going to keep going, building up quite a lot more trees. But the important thing to remember here is if you're painting along with this, only paint a few trunks or branches at a time because you need to work on dabbing off or lifting out some of the paint from where the trunks and branches go through the sunbeams while the paint's still wet. It makes it a lot easier. 
But don't worry if you miss out that window of opportunity and your paint dries before you get the chance to lift it out. Just wait until your whole painting is completely dry. And then you can go over the offending branches um, lightly with a little bit of water, wait for a few seconds, then dab it off and you will create the same sort of effect. So don't panic, but it's much easier to do it as you go like this. As I find that doing it this way, you can kind of balance your painting and balance your tones and kind of judge your tones as you go along. So slowly but surely, um, and then putting in some little side shoots and small side shoots and little broken branches coming up from the base here and there. But again, if any of these go through a sunbeam, they will need to be dabbed out. You can see that I've put in a few more trees and these trees towards the right um, are less dabbed out because they are in shadow. Most of the sunbeams come from the first third in from the right and then stretch across towards the bottom left part of the painting. So I just put in a little bit of the forest floor below the trees using a darker mixture of green um, sort of uh, brought down with some of my um, dark mitch that I use for the trunks and now I'm darkening up some of my canopies just to add some some tone to this group of canopies on the right. I'm going to keep the left side much paler because that's I want it to be more or less sort of sort of blurred out a bit by the sunlight so that hopefully it look a little bit more dazzling if I leave the left side very pale and very blurry. And now that I've built up a bit more tone in the canopies that are in shadow, I'm going to bring some, start bringing some shadow across the forest floor, but still trying to keep some sort of paler areas on the floor. I'm not going to be painting much detail here. Uh, the sunbeams and the light is going to be the focal point here and how it hits the branches and the trees. The ground is just kind of just supporting that. So I'm using very loose brushwork and all I need is the right colours and the right tone. So I suppose what I'm trying to do here is, although the sunbeams are really subtle, um, they are a bit clearer in real life because it's sunny in my studio, so it's a bit bleached out. But the sunbeams are very subtle, but I'm trying to paint everything around them so that it makes them stand out a bit more. So I'm happy with my forest floor for now. Um, so I'm going to get my dark mixture and my small calligraphy brush and paint in some trees on this side. This is a little bit trickier uh, right in the sunlight here uh, because you have to be quite quick, as I said, in order to paint on the trees and then take your clean tissue or paper towel and just dab through lightening it right up and you can see it a lot more clearly here where we've got more sunbeams how there is a differentiation between the dark trunks that aren't in the sunbeam and the lighter parts that are So I'll continue building up these trees, but I'm going to extend the trees on the right down through that first shaft of light across the forest floor, make the trunk slightly longer, and I think that balances up a bit better. And also suggests a shaft of sunlight just out of shot hitting the floor behind those trees. And again, that begins to increase the effect of these sunbeams, but without making the sunbeams too overt and obvious. So I've added a few more trees in. I shall add even more, but I now want to beef up the tone a little bit on the canopies this side. So it's burnt sienna and sap green again, but I'm dabbing it back to keep it a lot lighter and softer than the darker tones on the right side where the trees are in shadow. This is the side where the sunlight is hitting um, the trees. So I'm trying to keep it uh, balanced enough and light enough and sort of blurry enough so you've got that kind of heat shimmer that sort of um, light where the light hits it and it sort of seems more blurry 
So again, in order to emphasize the light, we have to add a bit more dark. So I've added some Payne's Gray to my sort of brownish mixture and swept it across the foreground, again to introduce tree shadows. Then maybe a little bit of foliage detail, just a bit of dotting and dashing with the calligraphy brush and some sap green and some burnt sienna here and there but very much softening it back, keeping it soft, keeping it gentle so it doesn't overpower and keeping it fairly light where it meets the sun rays. Now, a final detail is using really watery uh, sap green, putting in some distant trees, again, dabbing them out where the sunbeams cross them. But those very faint traces of distant trees just adds that depth and distance to the painting. And now some really dark accents on either side of the sunbeams. And these dark accents really throw the sunbeams across those tree trunks into sharp relief. And I'll just continue on and put in all those slightly darker branches on either side of the sunbeams. So I think I'm happy with that for a sort of an exercise of attempting to get these subtle sunbeams through the trees. So here it is with the tape removed and I'm fairly pleased with this. I like the sort of light touch. Um, I like that it's quite sunny and bright, but it's got that beautiful sort of autumn glow and just depicts the turning of the seasons from summer through to autumn. So I hope you'll give this a try. Even if you're a beginner, um, with a little bit of practice, I think you can find that these sorts of effects can be um, not too difficult to achieve and it will give you a range of kind of um, tools to use and apply in other paintings, in other types and other styles. So if you enjoyed this, please leave us a like and if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because it really helps with my reach. Um, and also click on the bell icon because then you'll get notified whenever I um, produce some new videos. Um, there's going to be a Halloween special coming up where I'm going to collaborate with Morgana Rose Art on Saturday. So that's something to look forward to. And I've got lots of wonderful content planned for the autumn and winter. A full on bright red, orange and gold autumn sunrays painting. Um, some beautiful winter scenes as well. So I look forward to you subscribing and joining me for these beginner friendly um, experimental and fun tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your support and thank you too to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.